Good morning and welcome to day 27 of August vlogs. Things are relatively back to normal today. Um, my in-laws have just left, they're heading back to Cornwall. Um, quite the journey. Um, I think they're doing it over a couple of days, taking it nice and easy, which is good. Um, and Arthur's at school, Jasper's at nursery. He's doing three days this week, um, so that's quite nice. Haven't worked out whether he's gonna do three or four days next week yet, Just see how he goes but he seems to be really really enjoying it and settling in really nicely which is brilliant um i am dying the nostalgia club today which means that i can't really show you anything that i'm dying in color um, so i might give you a few black and white shots um, and things like that but obviously it's a mystery club so i need to keep the mystery alive um but yeah i've finalized all the colors i've worked it all out and i kind of know what i'm doing I will say the 1970s was a bit of a challenge to work everything out. Normally I go through kind of the decade and look at all the key events and all the random extra bits and things like that. And I can really sort of see, you know, big things that jump out to me that will work really well with colors, um, that people will know and that, yeah. But for the 1970s, it has been a bit more of a challenge. There were quite a few kind of big key things, but sorting out colors for it was really, really tricky. Um, but we're there and I finalised it and I'm quite happy with what we're going with so yeah that's the plan today. Um, I could get some warping done at the same time but honestly I am exhausted. It's been a busy weekend of hosting and activities and all of that kind of thing <clears throat> so um, I'm gonna sit and knit while I'm waiting for batches to go. Um, I am gonna work on my test knit um, living in my lovely Eldenwood craft bag. Um, I've been working on this a little bit over the last few days, so it's coming along. I've just finished the third colour section, so kind of the fourth the fourth actual section. Um, so you've got the first two bits there, um, the second bit there, and then um, I've just finished this section, so I'm on to the fourth colour. Um, so I'm getting on with it quite well, and that's my plan today, is just to kind of work on this in between batches of um, yarn for the Nostalgia Club. shown you my brother-in-law's paintings before? I'm not sure I have. If I have done it was probably on a vlogmas a few years ago. <laughs> um, but I thought I'd show you. We've got three um, and they're all beautiful. Um, so as I said my brother-in-law is the artist. Um, he has a studio down in Cornwall um, near Perinathano and he's also about to open up, hopefully, we think, goodness knows, um, a gallery um, somewhere. I've forgotten where, maybe Marazion? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, he, we've got three small paintings done by him, um, but he does the most amazing, massive paintings. Um, so this is the first one. Um, a lot of his paintings are kind of seascapes and they just capture, I don't know, the essence of the Cornish Sea somehow. Um, and this is the second one. This one he gave to us as a wedding present um, when Tom and I got married. I absolutely love this one. Um, it's St Michael's Mount, just off the coast of Mara's Iron. Um, and I did two summers, I think, working on St Michael's Mount um, when I was a teenager, you know, summer jobs, that kind of thing. Um, so it always reminds me of that. It just feels like a really personal picture. I really like this one as well. It's a little bit darker than um, the other two. And a little bit dark by sort of most of his standards with his paintings, um, but I really, really like it. And then this is the final one that we've got. Um, I'd forgotten how much I love this one, actually, having just looked at it now. It's in our hallway, so it doesn't get seen nearly as much as the other ones do. I might have to move them around a little bit. <laughs> um, I can't remember. I think this one was given to us as a Christmas present. 
Um, but isn't it gorgeous? I love how he manages to capture the movement in the waves. Absolutely stunning. I mean, they're stunning from a distance anyway. But when you get up close and really see kind of the work involved and the texture as well. He's a really talented artist. I am just heading off to get the boys and it's the first time since spring that I've needed my big coat and a shawl. <laughs> I'm wearing my Pure Joy, which is a Hohi Locatelli pattern. Right, I better rush because I'm running late. We are back from a much less wet and dreary school run than yesterday, which I am very grateful for. Um, Jasper is, had a good day and he's now sitting and watching a little bit of Paw Patrol. Arthur has decided to create a quiz for us, so he sat at the dining table doing that. Oh, a quiz hunt, he says. Um, I have got a lot of the Nostalgia Club dyed today. I managed to get all of the main colourways dyed and two and a half of the mini skein colourways dyed, so that's pretty good. So I'll finish off the rest of those tomorrow. I really need to re-dye my hair. It's grown out quite significantly. <laughs> I keep noticing now it's while it's down. Um, anyway, random rambling about my hair. Um, I'm going to sit and work on my blanket for a little bit. I've managed to get one square in here today. Um, hopefully I can get a second square in because I am well over 10 squares behind on my square a day, which is not great if I want to catch up by the end of September. I may be miles behind on my blanket, but I have finally planned it all out. That will be the completed blanket. Um, the highlighted bit is what I've done so far. Um, and then I've planned out kind of the directions of all of the rest of my squares and everything like that. So at least I kind of know where I'm going with it now. It was a bit chaotic before because every time I finished, like, um, squared it off or rectangled it off, um, I'd have to take a picture and then work out where the next round was going to go and all the directions and everything like that. So I thought I'd just actually get it all planned out finally so I know where I'm going. Um, yeah, so it's symmetrical um, and a little bit crazy, but I'm quite looking forward to seeing how it looks when it's done. And I'm just working on this square here at the moment, which is one of the minis that I got from The Lonely Knitter. Bum, bum, bumbling yarns, I think. Can't can't get my words out as usual. Bumbling yarns, I think, is the yarn version of her business. Um, she's got Crafters Balm, which is the hand balm. The Lonely Knitter is her podcast, and then I think Bumbling Yarns is her new yarn dyeing sort of section of the business. Good evening. The boys are in bed, and we're just about to settle down for the evening. Hopefully. Um, I've just been answering a few YouTube comments and somebody asked me what I mean by warping and what warping is and I thought it would be a good chance right now <laughs> to um, explain what I meant. Um, I know some of you will kind of have a bit of an idea um, from me sharing a little bit of it before and things like that but hopefully it will help people understand a little bit more. Um, warping is, it's more commonly a weaving term, I think, um, but it's part of my process for um, dyeing self-striping. There's kind of three processes for me for dyeing self-striping. First, I have to warp the yarn, then I have to dye the yarn, and then I have to um, wind the yarn. Um, so warping, basically, um, it is a way of getting the skein of yarn to the lengths that you need it to make self-striping work. Um, so some people will use a warping mill, which basically creates one really, really, really long skein of yarn. Um, and then they can um, tie off sections in order to dye the stripes at the right length. 
I use a warping board which allows me to wrap the yarn onto the board um, knowing kind of um, how much yarn I'm creating per section. Does that make sense? Like I know how long um, the distance between the pegs are so that I know the, how much yarn one wrap will give me. So um, for example, if I wanted three meters of um, yarn for one of the colors, then I know I would need to wrap that three times. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, and then I can tie it off and then I can dye the sections in the different colors for the self-striping. And then once it's been dyed, I can put it back on the board afterwards and I can wind it off. And that's kind of how I create self-striping. Um, yeah, so basically that's what warping is. Um, the warping board has advantages and disadvantages. For me, it takes up less room so I can dye, I can... Um, well, I can do it, obviously. Um, you can get smaller warping mills, but you're limited. You can only make up to a, oh, I've forgotten how fun it, you can only create, I think it's something like a 16, 16 meter skein, something like that. Anyway, I would only be able to do four colors um, with one of the smaller warping mills. You can get giant warping mills, but to be fair, they would probably take up the size of my office. So I'm at no point able to fit that in my office. With my warping board, I can um, warp up to 10 colours, I think. I could do up to 10 stripes, um, but obviously it takes a lot longer to warp more stripes on a board. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's kind of what warping is and why I do it. Um, I've still got lots to do before I can start dyeing the stripes. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time, maybe even a couple of kind of afternoons when Tom's finished work, getting a bit more warping done if I'm gonna have stripes in the shop for Perth. But that's, that's stripes. They take a lot of time <laughs> and a lot of effort. <laughs> and I've not done them for five months. So um, it's a case of easing myself back in gently, I think. Anyway, I am now going to find something to put on the TV. I have poured myself a cheeky gin and tonic, um, a midweek one, it's a bit naughty, isn't it? But why not? Um, and I'm going to do some knitting and relax for the evening. So I will see you all tomorrow for more daily vlogs. <laughs>